Hi there, welcome to another live broadcast with myself, Angela McCall and McCall Media TV. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you all about how to plan the intros to your videos, whether they are pre-recorded or live, just like on this one, and give you some food for thought with regards to the, the topics and things that you should be saying, the speed of delivery, the fit for purpose, because obviously different audiences and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, just hopefully get you guys presenting your videos on the right track. So if you've not tuned in before, please bear in mind that I am live in my video streams across all my social media networks. That's Twitter, Periscope. Uh, I will be on LinkedIn as soon as they approve my application, but you'll also find me on my Facebook page, YouTube, and in my solopreneurs group on Facebook as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so um, I've got a, a real interesting one for you today. So this came off the back end of talking to a couple of people. In fact, I had an entire discussion with one person about four days ago with regards to what content to deliver in the beginning of their videos. And then ironically, I had the same question asked to me by another person literally 48 hours after. So as this seems to be a topic at the moment that's quite hot, I thought I would approach it. So I've got my little clipboard with all my little topics ready for you. And that's what we're gonna be covering in today's video. Um, um, oh, I've got a little hi, Edge from Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for watching and supporting my show. It's nice to see you. Okie dokie. So we are going to start by thinking about the order and the fitness of purpose for your videos and how you introduce yourself. Now, if you think about it, all your video content generally has to have two audiences. You've got the human audience where you want to engage and talk. And basically, they're the people that are going to be sort of uh, purchasing your, your products and services, but you've also got the kind of computer audience, like the, the bots, the algorithms and so forth on social media with regards to um, how you're going to SEO optimize your video content for basically circulating that content out on the internet. So what you need to do is have to think very carefully about the words and terminology that you're using with regards to your video titles and try and feed those into the audio as well, because they do listen to the audio just in the same way that uh, script editing services will literally transcribe your, your audio and put the keywords in that way when you've spoken them. You also need to think about it from a um, perspective that things like YouTube will be listening to what you say. So you've also got to think about the fitness of purpose with regards to whether you are doing a live stream video like this, because there are things that you can do live stream when you're being authentic and it's on the fly and people get the fact that you're kind of running this from the seat of your pants, as it were, whereby when you are doing pre-recorded videos, you've got a lot more time to slowly digest and sort of plan your content as it were and of course when you know your audience and who is going to be listening to you so i'm just going to dive in and put that one on screen uh, when you know who's listening to you the order in which you put your delivery and your introduction will also make a huge impact for you as well so for example on my live stream videos i like to say things like hi and welcome to my live broadcast with myself, Angela McCall and McCall Media TV. So instantly in those first 20 words, I've introduced myself as a person and my channel. But if I was doing this as a pre-recorded video um, where I've got a bit more time to plan and sort of structure my, my content, I probably would lead with the actual video topic title and the audience and then put myself and channel third. And the reason for that is because when people are logging in to do a live stream or watch you live, they know you're live, they understand you're live, and that actually puts a complete different twist on the environment and how you're delivering. And so people understand that you're gonna introduce yourself because it's more of that kind of one-on-one -on -one personal conversation you're having with the audience. But when it's a pre-recorded video and you've uploaded it to things like YouTube or wherever you're gonna put it, uh, people are basically out there looking for a answer to a solution or a problem, sorry, I should say. They're looking for an answer to a problem. They wanna know how to do X or Y. And when your video is delivered to them, they wanna know instantly in those first 30 seconds Seconds, are you going to be worth their time and money sitting there for the next 10 minutes watching your content to get those little bits
bits of solutions and answers that you're going to deliver. And the only way they can make that judgment is based on what you do in the first 30 or so seconds. So when you're thinking about the order of the content that I'm going to give you some food for thought on in the remainder of this video, think really carefully about who's watching your video, who you are talking to, how you are presenting your video with regards to it being live or pre-recorded and how that engagement is going to help your audience sort of stay tuned for the whole of your video content. So as we've already mentioned, one of the things that you need to do is name your channel. And the reason that you need to do this is because you do not know how your video is going to be used in the future. Now, if it's on things like social media, the chances are people could download it and play it without a Wi-Fi connection, especially at things like expo stands or networking events, or if they're doing some training of any kind and they've come across your video and they're actually like, your, what you're saying is really helpful to them, the chances are that they might play that video from their hard drive on their computer, at which point you want to give people watching that video that you've got no control over the ability to find their way back to you in the future. So you always need to name your channel. Let's just have a look. Um, your delivery is great. I love the way you are talking, taking us on your journey and giving us valuable insight on how we can follow your steps. Thank you, Sonia. I just have to throw these little comments up when they come up because it, it makes it all worthwhile. It gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling okay so moving on into our next step so you've named your channel now as i said to you you've got to work out the order that you put these points in but you then need to name yourself people want to know who you are but they'll only want to know that information after you have proved your worth to them so let's again take that whole concept from pre-recorded videos to live videos now obviously i'm talking one-on-one -on -one with you right now. So I feel like Nick, like that's much more of a personal approach. Therefore, I want to introduce myself to you just like I would if I bumped to you into you into the street or a networking event or something like that. You wouldn't just go straight into conversation. You'd be like, hi, I'm Angela. How are you? What do you do? And, and that kind of thing. And that's kind of the, the same ethos when you do a live presentation. However, when you're doing a pre-recorded video, as I said to you a minute ago, People watching your video are in the mindset of what's it in it for me? How quickly am I going to get the information that this person is going to be talking to me? And do I really care who this person is as long as the information is really valuable? At which point in those first 30 seconds, you are less important. More important is what you are saying. But what you do need to do is obviously introduce yourself, because if you do have that really resonating impact with your delivery of content and they go, oh, my God, you know, that's really useful stuff. They're going to want to clock in to see what it is that you are talking about, at which point that's when you start to get no liked and trust with your audience because they're going to want to clock in and know who is Angela McCall, at which point in the future, when another video comes up and Angela McCall is presenting X, Y, Z topic, which is relevant to their needs, they're going to be like, oh, this girl was quite good last time I watched her. Let's tune in and watch her again. And that is basically how the whole uh, sort of concept goes with regards to naming yourself. So think logically about how you're delivering your videos, whether they're pre-recorded and so forth, and who your audience are and what their needs are with regards to how important it is to get your name in early or later on in that intro. Right, so the next point we're gonna talk about now is naming your video title. Now, um, first of all, if you haven't watched any of my YouTube videos with regards to working out your SEO keywords, why not? you should do. I'll put some links somewhere up around this video after this video is finished and it's gone live. Okay, so what you need to bear in mind is your video title is the make or break. Now, I've called this video introducing your videos, okay, because I think if people are going to be stuck or they want to know how to do this, literally like in the text messages I've received from a few people this week, is, Ange, how do I introduce myself on video? OK, and or how do I introduce the first part of my video? I don't know. It's not resonating with me. Uh, you know, it takes me a long time to get into the content. And that that key word is the word that you need to lead with. So when you're doing your, your SEO keyword research, you need to bear in mind that you need to name your video. You need to name your thumbnail images. You need to speak audibly. Not I can say that word, but you need to speak that title in your audio transmission as well, because it will be picked up, like I said, with the with the um, transcribes 
services that like things like YouTube would have in the background as well. And you need to be able to realize that actually that is the keyword term that people are going to go and search for an answer to their problem. So that's why I've used mine as introducing your videos. But then you've also got the ability to throw in like a secondary title, a subtitle there, because when you are looking at your SEO keyword research, you will find that there will be um, a second front runner, as it were, or a second term that is really important and powerful. And if you haven't noticed already on my thumbnail image, I actually put the word like in brackets live because my my whole entire ethos about this video is how you introduce yourself on video. But actually, we're also talking about live streams. So my secondary title, you know, or in this case, I could switch them back and forth between the two of them. It could be introducing your live stream video or, or video. And those two keyword terms Although they're slightly different audiences, they are both covered within the content of this video and they are both important to me. So I've made sure that I have discussed it and used those two terms in my, my speech, my audio to you today. But I will also put that all through my descriptions. And you'll find that when I put my SEO keyword term on my YouTube title, I will put things like introducing your video and then it'll be colon, how to do da 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 da, da And I'll also drop the word live stream in there because it is important to me in order to be able to circulate that video. And therefore I want to hone in on that at the beginning of my video introduction, because I wanna know that, or I wanna make sure that my audience knows that when they're listening and they get that message in the first 30 or so seconds. And then as we've discussed, we need to name our audience. Now, I didn't do that. So bad, bad me, if that makes sense, a little slap on the wrist. I didn't actually say that my, my channel is, you know, perfect for startups, small business owners, solopreneurs, micro business owners, and that kind of thing. And I should have done. Um, but as you can see, that's one of the perils of doing live stream videos is that you have to kind of retain everything in your head and just let it flow out. And sometimes it is a little hard because I'm pushing buttons. I'm trying to remember what I'm saying. So but you do also need to think about this. And especially, obviously, if you can pre record your video content, because if you can name your audience, it is uh, highly compelling to them to be going, oh, that's, that, that's me. Think about it in this term. If you're walking down the street and someone shouts, Angela, and like waves at you, somebody that you know, you're going to have your attention, whatever you're doing, you could be looking at your phone, you could be talking to your friend, whatever, but you're going to hear your name and you're going to spin your attention to see who called you. And that is the powerful tactic that you are trying to gain when you name your audience in your video intro. Because let's say, for example, and I always use accountants because um, I, it's something that I kind of know enough about. My mum was an accountant, so I kind of know their world a little bit. But let's say you've got a video that is talking to new business startups. So naming a new business startup, saying this video is perfect for new business startups, businesses with less than 10 employees, businesses that have been trading for less than a year, you're going to suddenly identify as a member of the audience watching that video is this video content for me yes or no it's literally that black and white divide if it is you're going to be really focused if it's not then you'll be like okay it's not for me and what you'll do is you might surf on to see another video topic now don't worry about the fact that if it's not compelling to a member of your viewing audience as it were that you've lost them because you will be covering content in a whole variety of different topics for your business so you will have audience members at different stages in their business so you know tomorrow's video for that accountant could be how to manage and grow your business finances when you are over three years old or something like that at which point that will completely turn away the the new business startup but it would be highly compelling to a small business that's established like a husband and wife team with maybe three or four uh, employees helping them deliver their content and, and their business services. So what you do is you actually help focus in your audience and make them realize whether that video content is worth watching or not. And by that, you will then help engage them and hopefully they'll feed through and watch your whole delivery. And then last of all, um, the last thing I want to talk to you about, which really probably does apply more to live streams, is you need to talk about your destinations, about how your live stream is going live across different platforms, because everybody has a platform that is their favorite. Now, <clears throat> hand on heart, I've always been a Facebook gal, absolutely love Facebook, pretty much was online with them pretty much within the year that they sort of launched. So I'm one of the, <laughs> excuse me, I'm one of the original, shall we say, Facebook fans. However, in the last, say, six months, I've really decided to adopt 
LinkedIn. And even though I have been on LinkedIn for the last 10 years, I have literally been um, connecting people, shall we say, but I've never done anything with my LinkedIn profile. So if you was to catch me on one of those two platforms with a live stream video, I'll be like, oh, OK, and I'll find you on Facebook as well. Or I'll go and find you on LinkedIn because those two platforms right now in my world or, or YouTube, I should say, are really hot topics for me and everything that I'm doing. However, if I was for some bizarre reason on Twitter and I really don't use Twitter that much, um, it's just something that just never has resonated or worked with me. I'm not saying don't use it. I'm just saying it doesn't work with me. Um, but if I was on Twitter for some reason and I saw that, that would also compel me to go and find you on channels that I'm more familiar with and more comfortable uh, basically exploring. So naming how people can find you is a really powerful thing to do as well. And of course, that works for live stream videos. But what you could do is possibly adopt that sentence, as it were, for your own content being delivered on your different social media platforms. So you could say, you know, use my my handle at McCall Media TV because it's it's available on, you know, YouTube, Instagram. Instagram, Pinterest, wherever it's going to go. So you can explain it that way. And obviously, when you are doing a pre-recorded video, you have a lot more time to deliver that content and not stumble over your words like I have. So anyway, um, I just thought I would dive in today and give you a bit sort of a food for thought, really, because when I actually got down into the nitty gritty of answering those questions on those two texts from two different people about the same thing, I started to realise not only was I reiterating the same answer, but actually the more I thought about the answer, the more that I kind of realised that you should actually kind of cover in those first 30 seconds. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's not necessarily easy either. So one of the things you might want to do is literally write down and learn it almost like a script parrot fashion. Um, that way, you know, you've kind of got all your content and delivered. And once you've done it two or three times, you'll be able to sort of present it in a much more comfortable, natural environment instead of being like I am reading a pre-written script okay so you need to work a delivery that works for you but there is basically um a whole bunch of different content that i've just covered with you today so just to recap we've got you've got to think about the order of your content and its fitness for purpose your dual audience needs between computer programs or computer bots whatever you want to call them algorithms and your human audience that will be buying from you you need to think about naming your channel naming yourself naming your video title using the primary keyword you want to focus on then if you can throw in the secondary keywords seo title as a subtitle that really helps as well Definitely name your audience, which I didn't do today. So hands up, I've wailed on that myself. And then obviously all the different places that people can find you. And then you can get on and deliver your content. And my word, that was quite a topic we've covered today. But I hope you found it useful. If you've got any comments, please do use the um, hashtag Ask McCall Media. I'm just going to flow it across the bottom of the screen now. I have a Google alert sitting, listening to the internet. So anytime anyone uses that hashtag across any social media network or in any kind of blog articles, I get a little email to say someone's asking you a question, Angela, go find it. And then you can cover that topic in one of your video lives. So that's how I get my content. So do ask me your questions. If you haven't already, please do follow and subscribe and stay notified to me on YouTube. I really do like and hope you support me on that channel. It's something I'm working really hard to build up a following on at the moment. And uh, that's about it from me today. So I can see there's uh, just a couple of comments. Let's have a look. Um, oh, Sonia again. Sonia, do you do personal coaching? Oh, Sonia, what a question. In this precise moment, middle of May, as I answer your question, the answer is no. However, I have got some serious coaching uh, programs being planned as we speak. Um, the first thing I'm going to be hopefully delivering come June, sort of watch this space because I've still got to get all my ducks in a row, is a um, package, a, a training program with one on one support from me with regards to actually presenting video live streams. And I've got about six or seven guinea pigs lined up ready to go through that coaching program for me to help me out. And uh, hopefully off the back end of that, towards the end of June, early July, I do hope to start doing some one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. But I'm not necessarily rushing into anything. I want to take things nice and calm and slowly. But if you do have any questions, Sonia, and you want to pick my brains, do just drop me a message outside of uh, Facebook. I know we're connected on Facebook. Sorry, 
drop me a message outside my video stream because I know we're connected on Facebook. Um, I do have a couple of uh, YouTube group type things happening on WhatsApp that I can also bring you in on if you would like. And that obviously goes to anybody else that might be interested. So I've got a few things up my sleeve, but it's really early days and uh, hopefully things will change very soon. So thank you very much for asking that question. Um, we'll catch up, I think, after this. Okay, so that's it from me today, guys. I'm going to turn off my banner um, wherever it is. I can't find it right now. There we go. And I hope you really enjoyed today's content. If you've got any other questions, I'm going to hold fire for about five seconds to give people a chance to write. No, nope. okay. I am going to leave it there. Thank you very much.